50 years ago, the Apollo 11 mission landed the first humans ever on the moon. To celebrate this giant leap for mankind, let's melt some stuff. To celebrate this 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission, uh, a bunch of people are getting together to make something very cool. It's called Project Egress, and if you do some searching, I imagine you'll find a lot more information than I have at the moment. But it seems to me a bunch of various makers are, are were nominated or something. A bunch of different people are making different parts for the hatch, like the escape hatch. I don't know if escape is the right word. For the moon lander. And I was nominated to do this part. This is the door handle. Like It's not like the latch. It's the thing you grab to like the on the inside. You know how door handles work. Uh, this is a 3D print that I made. It's basically uh, a door handle. It bolts to the thing. Um, you hold it here. It's kind of big for a door handle, but remember, you're wearing a spacesuit when you're doing this thing. And if you've seen a spacesuit, it's freaking big. So, uh, you know, you got to have enough room to get your hands around. Grip, pull the door open after you latch it. That's what we're making today. I 3D printed this out of glow-in-the-dark PLA uh, for some reason. Uh, but I'm going to cast it in aluminum because that way I get to play with fire. These parts, mine and everyone else's, whom I don't know who they are, uh, will be sent to the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum and they will be assembled on the day, like the anniversary day of the moon landing by Adam Savage, supposedly, which is really cool because he's really cool. Anybody who's had their eyebrows singed off is a friend of mine and he's going to get to touch, not this one, but the one that hopefully I make and don't screw up. Let's get to it. First off, it's got holes. That's not going to work the sand casting. But I want to keep the holes in the pattern because I want to use them later when I drill the holes. So I'm just going to cover them with a bit of painter's tape, ram it up, and uh, I've never done this before with a pattern with holes in it. So fingers and toes crossed that this works. I've also sanded this pattern down to uh, get rid of the print lines. In the past I have not done that and it always comes back to bite me and yet I still don't do it. But I'd really like this one to not suck because it's a project involving other people and I don't want to let them down. There. Holes covered. Fingers crossed. Okay, so to prepare for this I already rammed up a bottom flask parting powder, shoved my pattern in. You can see the nice clean hole it's made. I'm going to use the same gating method that I've talked about at length recently, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but basically surge trap here, runner here, extended sprue here. Yes, these are 3D printed from the same filament here in the previous video. I linked to the, the files for these that I made, so check that out if you want to hear more about this gating method. And I am missing a tiny piece of copper pipe. Hmm. There it is. I actually would like this to be shorter and to have another one of those. So pipe cutting to the rescue. This might be an issue. This might screw up part of the, the uh, standard heuristic for gating, but I'm just going to ignore that and carry on regardless because that's what I do here. And in case you're wondering, I use copper pipe like this to form the channels so that they are smooth. I do not like the chop, the, the cut in ones. I try to keep the metal flowing smoothly like sweet jazz or something. That was a dumb reference. And melting metal. I should have referenced something else, like metal. Although heavy metal wouldn't apply because I'm going to use cast aluminum. Someone, get Metallica on the phone. Ask them if aluminum is metal enough for them. Now for the tapered sprue former. Also discussed at length in that previous video I talk about. Oh no, I screwed it up. I didn't screw that up, you screwed it up. Shut up. Another thing that potentially makes this pattern much more challenging is this. Getting the sand to pull out of this and here without sticking in. This pattern doesn't really have any draft, and draft is like where the edges are tapered so you can remove the sand easier. And these are so long and thin that if I had added draft to the model, I would have a, a very large thickness discrepancy. If I end up with, with a bit of sand blowout and the, the, when the pattern is removed, I'm just going to live with that and cast it anyway and then clean it up later. But obviously I would like it to look as good as possible. So that's kind of one of my goals. Shut up, grumbling stomach. You had plenty of food today. Sorry, slight diversion there. Another piece of this to vent the surge trap. You know, also in preparation for this project, last night I watched Apollo 13. Not the Apollo 11 documentary that I see all over the internet because 
Apollo 13 has 100% more Tom Hanks in it, and that's important for me. You know, when I was a kid, I was interested in space flight, but I was really much more interested in space flight as soon as I got massively addicted to Kerbal Space Program, the video game. Fantastic game, that thing. They're not paying me to say that. I actually, I kind of stopped playing it like two years ago because I had a problem. We're like, we're talking thousands of hours in that thing. I think I got hooked harder to that than I ever did to Minecraft even, and that's saying something. And watching Apollo 13 made me realize Kerbal Space Program is so easy and that you don't have to worry about crap like an oxygen tank blowing up when you hit the, the fan to stir it because some idiot put in wiring that was defective and it short-circuited immediately and you're gonna die. Because in Kerbal Space Program, the Kerbals die all the time, and they're totally fine with it. I'm going to link down below some videos uh, going over some of the other tools that I'm using, just in case you're interested and you haven't seen any of those, because it's been a while since I've made a bunch of them. This one in particular, this aluminum sand rammer, has become my favorite, I think. <laughs> oh, that's heavy! Or I'm a weakling. Maybe both. There, you see? The taller sprue former. Yeah, good idea, huh? That's right past me. I just now realized I didn't put in the feeders. I'm sure I can cut those after the fact. It'll be fine. Hey, me, does that sound like trying to rationalize away a mistake that you know is critical? Sure does, other me. Sure does. I always say slap up your pattern a bit before removing it just to show it who's boss. It would also be mighty helpful if you weren't so high on caffeine during this part. All of that coffee makes my hands very jittery. If you're wondering, the little cratery dealy is just to make sure if, if and when the metal comes out of this vent, it doesn't overflow and dump all over my flask again and again. Okay, this is potentially the most difficult flask removal I've ever done given the pattern has no draft and is very long and thin. Uh, and since I usually screw up and fail at this point, uh, this should be really interesting. So if you can cross your fingers in the past when I'm recording this, please do so. It would really help me out a lot. Okay, the pattern's stuck on the top one. That's not a problem. I have time to smoothen out my transitions. And pro tip here is, of course, leaving the most difficult and vital part for last. That way, you can extend your denial and don't have to face your failure quite so soon. All right, enough procrastinating. And just by the way, I'm not whacking it because I have pent up rage or anything, not just because of that. It helps kind of jar it loose from the sand so it pulls free a little easier. Okay, drum roll please. If you know any prayers, now's the time. And other movie sayings. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Didn't stick in here, didn't stick in there. Booyah. That's good. <coughs> Crap in my face. <coughs> here we go. I now realize the camera shut off before you see me cut the feeder there. I use this pipe. And end of instructions. Although I should mention the hole there is a little bit bigger than the part underneath, a little thicker, that way the feeder freezes last. So the, the feeder shrinks, not the part. Okay, got my furnace set up here, I got it full of uh, chunks of a bunch of old appliance motors. Gotta get it burning and fire up the air mattress pump I got right there. Where is my lighter? Metal out the feeder. That's a good sign. And look at my ingots. Still, still a bit liquidy. Probably don't want to touch those for a while. They're like 1500 degrees.
Uh, drum roll, please. Step one, remove. Are you excited? I'm excited. This is still kind of warm, but I'm excited. Oh, that looks promising. Oh, I need to clear some of the junk off this table. Oh, I'll start with this junk. Hurt. Cool. Okay, so I filled the whole thing. That's promising. I don't see any gaps or holes or nothing. Now this is oil bonded sand, so I have to separate out the burned crap from the not burned crap, which is really the least fun part of this whole system. One of these days I will find my sand cutting trowel. Here it comes. Wow, that sand is surprisingly toasty. This is looking promising. I think I just cut my finger on this. That wasn't so fun. Good thing the sand's already red. You can't see me bleed. Ta-da! Cool, huh? Got the whole part, even like this little bit. You know, and it, it came out with good, pretty good finish. I'm gonna have to clean it up a little bit. I think I may have overheated the aluminum a little bit there. Uh, looks like the gating did its job. It even captured some of the 3D print lines right there, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now we gotta cut all this off and clean her up. Dude. <laughs> Okay, with the crud sufficiently cleaned off, I'm gonna to try to transfer the holes from the pattern, and then I'm gonna I'm actually gonna drill them ever so slightly oversized, just in case I'm off a tiny bit, as is likely. Especially those are gonna be off a tiny bit. Makeshift center punch with a drill bit I don't care about. Big honking hammer. And for those of you freaking out, I'm using a brass hammer. It's not brass, it's aluminum bronze. It just looks like brass. And it wasn't even dinged up by that. Crazy. Bet the drill bit's kind of screwed though. Cool. Bolt holes. Obviously, I'm going to double check this before I send it out and I'll probably deburr it. Oh, it's not, not really much of a burr. See, look. No bleeding. No blood at all. Now we shouldn't put logos on these or anything, but I can't help but put my maker's mark in an invisible place. I'll just set it right here. This will be completely hidden up when it's bolted onto the machine. I've actually never tried this on cast aluminum before. Here goes. It um, didn't do anything. I'll hit it harder. Nah, never mind. It won't have my maker's mark on it. That's fine. Ready to go. I tried to find pictures. There was like text here on the original one. And I just couldn't get pictures of high enough resolution to figure out what it said. So I'm going to put nothing there. Because, like, it's already cast in aluminum. I mean, that's cool enough, right? But there, it's a handle. Look, I'm going to simulate pulling on this with a, uh, a space glove on. Now, those, those uh, gloves are really, really thick, and they're pressurized. So I'm told it's a lot like trying to move your fingers with rubber bands around them. So I'm going to figure uh, two welding gloves over the top of each other is going to be close enough. Hmm, how can I clamp this to something? Wood clamps! Structural test in three. Oh man, it's really hard to move your fingers in multiple welding gloves. Three, two, one. Okay, so that works. That would definitely work as a handle. Part done. Thank you to everyone involved for uh, for inviting me to, to join in. This is this has really been really cool. I learned a lot about uh, casting from this this very unique shaped piece, and uh, I look forward to see it being put together. I would love to go see it live, but unfortunately it's midweek. Uh, I believe it's July 18th. Well, I'm working because it's Thursday, so that's kind of a bummer. But there will be a video on tested. The YouTube channel, if I remember right, from the, the email. So check that out and uh, check out. I'm gonna put a link below to the announcement for this project. And at the bottom of that is a link, is like a list of all the people involved. So go check them out. They should be pretty, pretty cool. They're also making other cool things. I don't know if there are any metal casters, but I know there's like machinists and 3D printers and some, some general, uh, just general makers of everything. So who knows? There might be other metal casting involved. 
So just go check it out. And uh, if you get if you get to the uh, museum, the Air and Space Museum, and see it in person, uh, take a picture of this handle and send it to me. I'd like to see it in place. Thank you for watching. Catch you next time.